So this next interview is with Jason Hoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Jason, you're known within Ericsson as the cloud guru. Oh. What does it guru. mean? Guru. Guru. What does that mean? Being a cloud guru? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm also sometimes called a cloud pioneer. Okay. So it means at one point I had a perfectly good job and I was crazy <laughs> enough to get in like a, you know, horse-drawn wagon, go far out west and then end up basically uh, having family members die in the snow and I ate a neighbor and, and that sort of thing. I mean, I, but in all seriousness, I, it just goes back to, um, um, you know, I, I, I you know, started and, and was the CTO of a, of a large-scale cloud provider for a decade. Uh, and we were sitting there back in, say, 2003 doing completely on-demand, you know, end-to-end -end infrastructure capable of sort of every workload, you know, before, you know, even Intel shipped a 64-bit chip. Um, so around this type of space, you know, I've, I've, I've been there since the very, very, very beginning. So, mm -hmm. so what does your role entail here at Ericsson? Uh, I'm the product line head for our cloud software inside of BU Cloud and IP. So I'm the P&L and product owner of all the stuff we do with cloud software. In terms of your go-to-market strategy, what are some of the products you've developed or offer telcos today in, as a cloud? Well, if you look at what we're doing end-to-end uh, -end within the cloud space, um, I mean, that literally starts from um, uh, really sort of how we're driving this type of overall, like, process, if you will. I mean, if you think of what the technology cycle is within cloud, it's really around, you know, how is someone standardizing on a set of technologies and how are they driving a one facility, one hardware, one software, one operational, one economic model for their infrastructure. And I'm saying infrastructure in that you can think of cloud as, as being network, compute, and data under one automation, one governance domain versus just network infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, and so, of course, you know, for Ericsson doing this, it means being an infrastructure company, not just a network infrastructure company. And it also means that a lot of the things we're doing from a product perspective have to do with the compute and data part, not the network part. And they have to do a lot with automation and governance. Um, but it is on that first sort of thing of how are we driving that type of like um, real sort of standardized into an infrastructure where the, the key benefit you get is a continuously improving infrastructure. Because if you take this from sort of a top-down view, you have your data right, mm -hmm. that needs to be in a platform, and ideally all this is sort of managed together. You have all of your applications that need to be in a platform and all managed together. Those sit on top of an infrastructure that you're continuously improving and driving efficiencies in. Just that simple. Um, and so when we start thinking around how are we doing the standardization step, how are we doing this type of thing where we're driving like, you know, continual consolidation, driving up occupancy of facilities, driving up utilization, driving up the density of these types of things. That's where CapEx savings comes from. Um, and so a lot of that's a combination, of course, within services within Ericsson, but also then product capabilities we're doing. And then really sort of how are we doing this type of abstraction? How are we making all functionality, all capabilities completely programmable? Um, virtualization is part of that toolbox, but it's not, it's not the only thing. And that sort of swings into the next two things, automation, automate everything, you know, which is where OPEX savings has to come from. But if you're making an army of robots, you want to make sure the robots can't take over the world. And so that fifth thing basically swings in, which is governance. And so you have to govern the performance of things, the quality of things, the economics of things, and then also then the security. Because if you think of that, making everything completely programmable means you're also making everything completely accessible. And normally we do security by limiting access. So from a product perspective, if you look at sort of the pillars of the strategy there, it is exactly around, OK, well, how are we making sure that the products themselves, like you take even the Blade server platform, you, know, you often see these, these pictures where all oh, 20 different telecom nodes. But for the last eight years, Ericsson's been shipping everything on one hardware platform, standardization. We also allow people to like drive up the density of that hardware platform, combine. We also sit down and do common equipment management and sort of everything else like that, abstract everything. Then you drive this automation and sort of governance part. So it's not like it's an unfamiliar concept to us, but it's really how am I driving the accessibility of the system and programmability of it? Number two then is how am I automating everything? Number three is how do we have real governance models in place? 
Number four is how do we have a completely different security model than everyone else in the industry? And then from a like product perspective, that's literally data centers and data center infrastructure management, complete lines of hardwares across NEBS and non-NEBS and multi-vendor equipment management, you know, multi-hypervisor approach, multi-cloud stack approach. You know, we did an acquisition in the platform as a service space, which is around application management, like that top-down view. Mm -hmm. A very robust security portfolio that has differentiation in it that no one else basically has, the ability to sort of measure everything inside of this cloud stack, and then a set of like about 15 different data and storage products, and then a common data management on top of it as well. Um, you know, for us it's really around, because honestly you go into any enterprise and you tend to start thinking around just very simple questions like, okay, you're responsible for, you know, as a CIO or CTO, you're responsible for all the applications. Do they run in a common platform? Are they written in sort of common languages? You're also responsible for the data. Is it all managed in a common platform with common pipelines, you know, or someone like that? And then when you get underneath, do you actually have an infrastructure that you're able to like continuously improve on? And the answer to those usually is like, no, I actually don't even know where all my hardware is and what it does for me. And no, I don't actually know what operating systems on what piece of hardware. And no, I actually don't know what all the applications that I'm running do for the company. And no, I I don't have a cohesive data strategy sort of end-to-end. -end. And now if someone even walked in and said that I'm required to guarantee the integrity and attribution of all of that data, I don't have a set of technologies to sort of satisfy that as well. And so we're making a real product push within cloud to in fact have products that do not exist on the market that address a real actual problem in the space like that. Um, and um, just doing that literally end-to-end -end from facility all the way up to data.